folks are in situations that they are because of Dr. King, and it's a, a good day for us to, to reflect and recognize that. Um, that being said, uh, we just got done with a spirited defensive practice as uh, what we experienced at Western um, is not necessarily who we are or, or, de or did we demonstrate the strides that we have made. Um, had a good conversation in the locker room prior to practice. Let's put this in perspective. Let's talk about the reality. What is our record? Three and two. Is the world coming to an end? No. Did we play good defense versus, West, uh, versus Fort Wayne? No. Did we play good defense versus Western? No. What do we need to improve upon? Um, so it was a conversation piece. And like I said, we had a, a spirited practice today. Um, lots of attention to detail, focused, locked in kids. Uh, I thought we had a good practice today. And so we'll go at it again tomorrow and then welcome Omaha, who is one in four in the league, but probably the best one in four team in the league. Uh, their record is not indicative of, of how talented they are and how many weapons that they do have. Um, and as Dave said, looking forward to a good crowd on Wednesday. I know there's a couple ticket deals out there. Uh, I hope people can take advantage of that. But looking forward to get back on the winning track, back on the correct side of the scoreboard on Wednesday. Close the game down a little bit more. Do you think that plays more into your defensive style? Uh, I think one challenge that Western posed was their pace of play and our uh, inability to match up as quick as as needed, and and the style of play that Omaha runs is, is certainly they want to shoot. Uh, there's a, they have a few kids that want to shoot the three, but they don't play at quite the breakneck speed. Um, so that coupled with some of the drills that we've done in practice today, and then we'll do again tomorrow uh, to help us filter, read, and then translate what we see on the floor as far as defensive transition. Um, I'm hoping for a much better uh, outcome in that part of the game on Wednesday. Arn, obviously you play a lot of young players, a lot of freshmen. Uh, how challenging is it to get them to buy into, we need to play defense? Obviously they, you know, they've grown up liking to score and maybe run it up on some teams in high school. How challenging is it to say, hey, defense is way more important? I think for every kid, it's a different conversation. And so for some kids, it's as hard as you run on offense. If you don't do that on defense, you're not going to play, and I'm not going to be able to demonstrate what you can do on offense. And, and that resonates with some of them. Um, and others, it's having more confidence in technique because defense is not something that a lot of high school coaches you know, spend a lot of time on. So that's another, another conversation for, for, for different kids. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's about the consistency, consistency to do what we are capable of doing. And when you talk about Denver and you talk about uh, USD and you even talk about SDSU, we demonstrated something far higher and far more consistent than we have in the last two games. And, and so it's getting us to that point, which they all have proven that they can do. Um, that's, that's the conversation and that's the challenge. Well, generally, technique, effort? Effort. We can teach technique and just kind of like rebounding. There are, there are ways that make it easier for different players, but all of it requires a high level of effort to execute. Riley Jacobson still out, or is she going to return this week, or do you know? Um, uh, she has. She did not travel with us, so she could stay back and do some rehab. Um, she has a doctor's appointment either later today or first thing in the morning, um, and we're hoping for some good news there. If she is available, it will be very sparingly, uh, as certainly she hasn't had a whole lot of practice. If she's not... Um, we'll go with what we have and, and continue to rehab her. What do you make of Shaw for Omaha? Seems like a lot of their offense runs through her and runs through the post. That's something that you haven't seen a whole lot of from teams, even in Summit League play. So many teams like to play fast. They like to have guards outside that, that knock down threes. This all runs, uh, or the heart of the offense is in the post for Omaha, and a lot of that is Shaw. What, what kind of player do you see when you watch her on film? Michaela Shaw is a very dynamic player, and in the past she's played a lot of 4-5 or five for them. This year she's playing more on the perimeter and, and being more of a 3. Her game really hasn't changed, uh, but they like, so far, uh, especially in the Summit League, they've played with three forwards on the floor if you count Shaw as a forward. Um, and, and so that matchup um, could be challenging for us if we aren't, aren't engaged and aren't locked in. Um, but I, I would say her number one skill is the pace of which she plays at. Uh, she plays at a good pace. It's not breakneck speed, but she's always moving and she's always changing pace. Um, and so things that we've talked about are just when you think you, you have her, her stop, she's going to pivot. She's going to step through. She's going to reverse pivot to, to gain more space. Um, and so us being able to 
contain her but stay in a stance even when she's picked up her dribble uh, will be will be very important. She's a dynamic scorer. She's a, a fun kid to watch, and and obviously uh, Brittany and, and their staff is ec- ecstatic to have her. Um, and, you know, she's a tough cover, but at the same time, you know, she has teammates that, that we have to respect as well.